Thank you, Mr. Miller. Chairman Miller, I, I want to thank you for uh, holding this hearing today, and I welcome each of our witnesses. This committee plays a key role in policies impacting the quality of life for all Americans of all ages and of all incomes. I'm especially grateful to have six of these Americans here with us today ready to provide their testimony on the state of our consistently growing economy. Mr. Chairman, I've never been one to engage in class warfare, and I'm not about to start here. I've always found that while pitting one class against another often makes for good politics, it rarely makes for good policy. Instead, I'd like to focus this morning on where we've been, where we are, and where we're going from an economic policy perspective, because frankly, I think members in both parties have a good story to tell when it comes to our economy. At the start of this decade, the dot-com bubble had burst. Financial events around the world compounded the problem, and we found ourselves sinking into a recession. Congress responded quickly, not by adding more layers to the federal bureaucracy <clears throat> and micromanaging our economy back to health, but by cutting taxes for every single person in this room, and literally in every room in America. The years that followed have witnessed dramatic economic growth, even after the September 11th terrorist attacks and the launch of the global war on terrorism. And on that strong economic foundation, we've set into motion many important policy reforms, including several that were born right here in this very committee room. In the wake of the corporate scandals, we enacted the first meaningful pension reforms in a generation, ensuring workers' retirement savings will be there for them when they need it, while restricting excessive golden parachute executive compensation agreements and adding stability into a system in dire need of reform. And to your credit, though, although coming late to the game, and particularly after neglecting to offer a comprehensive pension reform plan of your own, Many on your side of the aisle joined with us last summer to send the President a pension bill and send the American people a message that we're serious about protecting their retirement savings. We've given Americans more control over their health care savings than ever before through the establishment of health savings accounts, an effort that has gained significant bipartisan traction. Unfortunately, similar efforts to rein in out-of-control medical liability lawsuits and on this committee in particular, to provide small businesses and their workers an easier path to access affordable health care, have run into a partisan wall. But we'll keep trying. On education, we've laid the foundation for a strong workforce through the No Child Left Behind Act. We've worked together to put college within reach from low- and middle-income families by extending 529 college savings plans, making college tuition tax deductible for low- and middle-income families, and beginning to hold colleges accountable for their role in the college cost crisis. We've begun, <clears throat> we've begun strengthening math, science, and critical foreign language programs to enhance our global competitiveness. And we've modernized our job training system to meet the new realities of the 21st century economy. Is there more work to do? Absolutely. But anyone who ignores the progress we've made so much of it in a bipartisan way is more concerned with party politics than with proactive policy. And I'd strongly urge them to take a closer look at the facts. More than 7 million new jobs have been added to our economy since August of 2003, spanning more than three years of uninterrupted job growth. The unemployment rate is holding steady at 4.5%, lower than the average of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Workers' combined earnings of benefits have hit an all-time high, rising some 10% since the start of this decade. The average 401k retirement savings plan is now more than 65% more valuable than it was in 2002. The pension plans of our nation's largest employers ended 2006 with more than 100% of the assets needed to pay pensions indefinitely a 20% increase in four years. And analysis project that this year's college graduates will enter the most lucrative job market in years, with employers planning to hire some 20% more graduates this year than last year. With these thoughts in mind, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to include in the record 
two recent news articles published in the January 23, 2007 Wall Street Journal entitled Pensions Plans to Take Healthy Turn. And Class of 07 gets plenty of job offers, as well as the January 28th of 2007, 2007 New York Times article detailing a sharp increase in workers' wages. Without objection. Thank you. Now, is this utopia, Mr. Chairman? Most definitely not. But at the same time, it's unmistakable proof that our pro-growth policies are strengthening our economy, creating jobs, and spurring investment. And we're doing all of this without adding new layers of government and disguising it as innovation or competitiveness. Rather, we've unleashed the entrepreneurial spirit that drives America and filled in the gaps with meaningful reforms that are making a real difference for students, workers, and retirees. That's something to be proud of, Mr. Chairman, and indeed, that's something to build upon. 